Do you know what filter means for your skin? It means it's going to be all red and dry. Especially if you have something called eczema. Here's some tips to keep you from scratching off your leg. Thank you, alter ego Liz, for that very interesting introduction. Um, but she's not wrong. Today we will be talking all about how to help you reduce redness and irritation in your skin this winter, particularly if you or a little one you love or anyone in your life has eczema or other skin conditions that leave your skin dry, flaky, and prone to irritation from the cold and wind. Let's go. There won't be any more singing, I promise. Hello there. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Liz. I am a family nurse practitioner and mother to a lovely little lady with eczema that's really opened my eyes to like all of this. And today I'm going to give you the chat that I give all of the humans or caregivers with eczema that come into my office because you deserve to know that as well. It's really, it's easy to control, but there's just not a lot of information out there. So now there is. Um, and life is a lot more pleasant, as you probably know, when you don't want to like absolutely rip off all your skin because it itches so badly. So we will go over what is eczema, how having dry skin, even if you don't have eczema, can benefit from having a really good routine to keep it from getting itchy and dry. And we'll go over some treatments, um, what I recommend to my patients, and a little bit about Water Wipes, who is sponsoring this video. When Water Wipes contacted me about partnering on a video, I kind of did one of those like double takes at my emails because I have been using Water Wipes uh, for my daughter for essentially her whole life, at least since she developed eczema, which she was like a month old. Why would we be using them? Uh, well, because they are pretty much, as their name implies, 99.9% .9 just high purity water, a drop of fruit extract, and then the wipe. And that is what humans with sensitive skin need. After trying like half a dozen other brands that just made her diaper rashes worse, um, I, and I also went through a phase where I thought I could do it myself. I was like, I'm just gonna make a washcloth every time with water and a wipe, and then I realized, <laughs> I'm lazy and this is not sustainable, That didn't last very long. I uh, picked up a package of water wipes and that is legitimately all we have been using for her for like two years now because that child has some of the most sensitive skin in the entire world. Um, but these didn't bother her at all, so that was awesome. If you have littles who need super gentle wipes that are essentially just water and a wipe, this is going to be your answer. Water wipes are soap and fragrance-free to reduce the chances of drying out the skin. More on that later. Plus, Water Wipes was awarded the National Eczema Association Seal of Acceptance. Also, clinical studies have shown that babies cleansed with water wipes have reduced incidences and shorter durations of diaper rash in both term and preterm infants. And while I haven't gone out there and like conducted official studies myself, I have stashed a ton. I went out and bought a ton of the travel size bags of water wipes and put them in the supply closet at my job. So when people would come in inevitably and their baby had diaper rash or they were concerned about it, I could give them a pack to take home and start using right now so that irritation wouldn't continue and then when they usually came back um, either I was checking up on with them up with them on the phone or whatever they had almost always switched over to water wipes because they they were like oh yeah this definitely helps so if you are a parent of a little one and need them some super gentle wipes or a healthcare professional looking for a recommendation that you can give your patients I think these are awesome and they're really going to work for you um, I use them like I said and I I love them. Thank you Water Wipes for helping to keep my daughter way more comfortable and for sponsoring this video. Now let me tell you why it is so important to have non-drying or non-irritating products for your skin when you have something like eczema or other skin conditions. So let's start with the very basics. And if you are already someone who is super familiar with the background of dry skin, why it occurs and all the things about it, feel free to use the timestamps below to jump straight to the treatment and prevention section. But everyone else, uh, if you'll stick with me for just a second, because understanding what is happening in your body and in your skin is so helpful in order to understand how to treat it and prevent it from happening in the future. 
So fun fact, your skin is your body's largest organ and its primary job is to keep your insides inside and protect you from things on the outside. And one of the things it wants to really keep in is water because we are made of mostly water and require it to function. So think of your skin, It's we're gonna think of it like your armor. If our skin is really healthy and happy, it's intact. There are no holes, no cracks. It's doing a really good job at keeping all of the fluid and all of our bits and organs inside. And it's also really good at keeping bacteria, dirt, allergens, all of those things out. Healthy skin is not flaky or super duper tight. It's a nice in-between squishy texture that can handle being bent and manipulated without breaking. Think of healthy skin as like, a neoprene wetsuit. It's really easy to work in. It keeps the inside of the suit nice and cozy. It keeps the water on the outside and it's very, very flexible and you can bend all over without breaking it. Now, if you are watching this video, it's probably because you do not have flawless skin. Let's be real. So let's talk about why you're probably here. Dry skin. So when our skin armor is really, really dry, it is not squishy and it's not flexible and it's not able to stand up to the regular wear and tear because its elasticity is dried up. Dry skin is incredibly brittle and can break with very little outside stress. You're gonna think of this one kind of as like a suit of armor from medieval times. See all the cracks like in the joints, like how you can't move. It's because the armor is super stiff and without cracks, it can't move at all. You'd be stuck like this. You may have noticed that there are cracks all over your body armor, your skin, over the elbows, the knees, the knuckles. Why are they there particularly? They're there because these are the areas that can dry out the quickest and they have the most friction and movement. They have the most stress on them from regular movement, so they're irritated more. And they, if they just are dry, then they don't have the flexibility to stretch. So when the skin gets stressed over a knuckle or a moving place, it breaks in order to ease the tension. And that's when it starts letting moisture out and it can allow bacteria and dirt and allergens to come in. And this is gonna cause inflammation in the skin. And below the skin, your body's trying to, you know, pull out its immune response to fight off all these germs that are trying to get in. So we're gonna have redness, irritation and itching because irritation itches, but also healing itches. So your body's constantly trying to like heal itself. So it's just like a red kind of puffy, itchy mess known as eczema or most other things with dry skin. So what does this actually have to do with eczema? Well, eczema is a skin condition where the body doesn't do a great job making the ingredients it needs in order to provide a nice stretchy skin armor, putting it at risk for drying out really easily and cracking. Eczema is typically worse in cold, windy environments because those two things on their own put a strain on even the healthiest skin. And when your skin isn't starting off with a nice soft wetsuit, but instead it's starting out with like, you know, a cracked metal hardcore suit, well, like things can go south pretty quickly. The most common places to find eczema is on the hands and on the legs but it can appear on any skin of the body. And another condition, a skin condition you might've heard with that sounds a lot like this and is treated fairly similarly is psoriasis, which can also be triggered by cold and dry environments, but can also, it's much more of a systemic thing. So it affects a lot of different organs. So it can be brought on by stress, by illness and things like that. So what are we going to do about the eczema, the psoriasis, the dry skin? First, 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 you should always seek care from your healthcare provider because it's always helpful to have them just brought in on the loop to make sure that they are guiding your treatment. And in some cases you'll need a topical, like an on the skin ointment. Um, it's usually a steroid and it can help get really severe things under control so that we can then like implement all of our things and keep you from getting there again. But the goal here with all of these skin conditions is to, like I said, avoid getting to that really exacerbated angry place in the first place to keep our wetsuit intact so that we don't need to treat it with anything. Uh, and how are we going to do that? 
We are going to do it by keeping as much of the moisture in as possible and avoiding irritations. And this is why like water wipes was really helpful with my daughter's diaper rash because her skin was already filled with little armor cracks, making it super prone to irritation. So having really simple wipes made all the difference because they weren't introducing anything new. It was just like very simple and gentle. So how are we gonna do all of this? All right, so let's start by examining the products that you regularly come in contact with, uh, with your skin. And I'll, we'll kind of go through and say like, ooh, maybe try to avoid ones with this in it. So the first thing I look at is does it have fragrance? Fragrance is usually listed by the ingredients or by actual fragrance. So you have to look for both. And if it does, I would say bye to that if you have itchy or dry skin. Fragrances irritate a lot of skin and you just don't need that. Also, you're gonna to wanna to say goodbye to soaps that are super stripping. If your skin feels super duper dry after you wash up, your soap is probably a little bit too harsh. We don't want to wash away all of your body's natural oils. Those are actually helping keep your moisture in. So ditch the super hardcore soap because that's gonna take off the dirt and that your own oil. And instead go for something that is marketed as like mild and without fragrance. Usually these will be like in the gentle soap section. If you want to get even like more detailed with it when you are actually reading the label, try looking and avoiding things with sodium laurel sulfate as that can be a harsher soap and look for things that are more sodium laurel isothionate. It sounds like counterintuitive, but you actually want to look for a more acidic soap because that will help you match the pH of your skin. Um, so if you ever see a soap that's marketed as low pH, that is actually a gentler soap than a traditional soap, which is going to be much more basic on the pH scale. It's gonna be up more around 10 and can tend to be a lot harsher. So that's kind of what I'm looking for when I look for soap. Let's talk about what I recommend to my patients. This is probably easier. The one I love the most are um, is a soap by Vanacream. It's a Vanacream cleansing bar, which is the simplest and gentlest per um, our dermatologist <laughs> when my daughter had this. And it's But it's definitely pricey for soap. There's also the Dove Sensitive Skin Beauty Bar. It's hypoallergenic, hypo, not hyper, <laughs> um, hypoallergenic, fragrance-free, and contains a moisturizer and is usually around like a dollar a bar. It's found in like anywhere that sells soap um, and is more accessible. Cetaphil, CeraVe, Eucerin, they also all have a gentle skincare line. I just haven't tried their soaps, but I'm sure they all follow the same type of pattern. For little ones with like eczema and dry skin, I usually either recommend the Cetaphil baby wash or shampoo, Aquaphor baby wash or shampoo, or the Vanna Cream baby wash and shampoo. These are incredibly mild and don't have any fragrance or odor or dye. They can also be found at almost every drugstore like Target, Walmart, CVS. However, the drawback of these is since they are marketed for babies, they usually run like four to $10 a bottle, which is a lot for soap and a lot more than the adult versions. So if money is tight, I usually encourage parents um, that first babies don't need a lot of soap uh, and adult gentle soaps in just small amounts are almost always okay. Uh, really babies, like I said, you're, you're washing their diaper area and you're washing areas that got spit up on, but babies don't need really hardcore washing anywhere else until they get older and dirtier. Um, water does the trick until they're older and um, they can, yeah like I said, get themselves phenomenally filthy. Um, so for reference now, my daughter is two and I just use the Dove bar soap we mentioned above um, because she kept drinking the Aquaphor soap out of the like container. So I decided that that was enough of that with her fancy baby shampoo. <laughs> Um, she's yet to eat the actual bar soap. So that's where we are. We probably made that transition when she was about like one and a half. Um, now, so we've already decided how we're going to wash ourselves. Perfect. Now the bath or the shower is done. And this is actually the most important part and the step that is the most frequently messed up. You might be saying, but Liz, how can I mess dr up drying off myself or my child? And oh, let me tell you a fun secret. You, my friend, are probably doing too good of a job drying off. It's true. With dry skin and eczema and psoriasis, you actually want to barely dry off. And this is where most people make, it's the most common mistake I see in my patients. Um, so when you're drying off, you're gonna really wanna do like just a few pats to get the big droplets off. And then you're going to want to immediately slather on a really nice and thick moisturizer onto your mostly damp skin. Um, 
because water is the best moisturizer we have. And if you can get some barrier cream on there to stop it and trap it against the skin, that's going to be the gentlest moisturizer possible and is going to help you repair your skin armor. Now, notice that I said barrier cream. And if you were like me a few years ago when I was just diving onto all of this, you're like, what the heck is a barrier cream? Like lotion? Um, let's look into that a little bit because as I have learned, moisturizers, there's a whole spectrum of them. Um, so it is a rather, and it's a large spectrum of moisturizers. And sort of at one end of the spectrum down here, we have lotion. So lotion actually has a, it has a ton of water in it. So they're introducing the moisture, which is good, but it's usually very thin. So, which means it soaks in very quickly and it's not very sticky. So it's, it's very well loved. Um, Lotion is a lovely choice if your skin is already pretty healthy and just needs like a little bit of a moisture boost and there's no, you're not trapping water in, you're actually introducing the water in the lotion. But in order to keep that very appealing texture, lotion actually has alcohol in it, which is really drying and almost always has a fragrance in it as well in order to mask the alcohol component. So I don't usually recommend lotions to individuals with any kind of skin sensitivity, dermatologic thing, uh, dry skin, people with eczema, psoriasis, anything like that. Because remember, we want to avoid irritants like fragrance or things that are going to dry out your skin more. Um, and that's going to be something like an alcohol. So what is on the total other end of like a skin moisturizer spectrum? Petroleum jelly. Uh, an example of this is going to be something like Vaseline. And this is literally just a barrier cream, which means that it is a, it can act as a patch in your skin armor. It's really thick. It's really sticky because it is just mineral oils and waxes. So it's really annoying and messy, but it creates a seal on your skin that is excellent at keeping moisture in and yucky things out. So this is a really good skin protectant, but it doesn't really, it doesn't add any moisture into the skin because it has no water in it. So this must be applied to your skin when your skin is damp if you want it to act as a moisturizer because if there's no water under it, it, it can't trap any of the water in. Um, you can use it on a dry skin if you just want to use it to keep the water that's already on your inside of your body in and keep other things out. But honestly, Vaseline is usually just something that I recommend for like spot treatments for when things are really bad. Like if you have an exacerbated elbow um, and probably put like a gauze on it to help cover it up because, um, or it's really good on diaper rash, like because you can then put a diaper over it because you wanna cover it because it's messy and it stains things, it gets all over clothes and it makes it really difficult for like practical use everywhere, especially when you're putting it on like a small child or a toddler who will then paint the whole house in their body because um, then you'll have Vaseline all over your walls and that sucks. So super duper good when you have a flare up that you can cover up, um, also super duper cheap. So it's something to keep in mind if you're on, um, if you have flare ups, if you're on a budget and you wanna use it, but I wouldn't recommend it as an all over daily moisturizer unless you love cleaning your walls. <laughs> um, so what do I actually recommend the most that falls on this spectrum is Vanacream. Vanacream is more, it's more towards the Vaseline end of the spectrum in terms of a moisturizer, but it is less thick. It has water in it. And I love this stuff. Um, it's thick. It's hypoallergenic. It is fragrance free, alcohol free. It is lanolin free, which is lanolin is an aquaphor. And some people are sensitive to that. It is all the things free. The only thing is it is definitely not free. Um, this stuff is going to be like $15 for like a tub that's like that big. I haven't been able to find anything that keeps skin quite as happy that is cheaper, but if you have any recommendations, please leave them below. Um, but Vanacream applied daily after a bath or a shower within 60 seconds of leaving the water and applied to damp skin. This is the key here, friends. If you take nothing else from the video, it is this. This will help heal skin and reduce eczema flares, dry skin, irritation, psoriasis, and help manage all of those things and keep your skin armor a lot happier. Sometimes with really, really severe cases, we're gonna be starting to do this twice a day where there's like a morning we'll just wipe off with water and then pat this on and then a evening bath or shower. But the goal is to get you down to once a day maintenance for this, even if you only have to do it in the seasons that are cold. Now, as I stated forever ago, sometimes you do need something like a topical steroid to help get the skin lesions or eczema under control. But the goal is to need these less and less as they can make your skin thinner and we definitely don't need to make already weakened skin armor any thinner, do we? No, no, we don't. So 
that is kind of all of the everything. Let's do a quick recap because I know I threw a lot at you. One, if you have dry skin, eczema, or psoriasis, and you want to beef up your skin armor, you will want to avoid products with fragrance, dye, alcohols, whenever possible. Read all your labels, see what's in all your products, and then just kind of decide what, where you can, you know, where it's worth it and where it's not. Use a gentle soap that has a lower pH so that it is less stripping, and moisturize your damp skin within 60 seconds of exiting the water with a very, very boring but protective ointment that has no smell, something like Vanna cream or some other very gentle, um, more on the cream side versus the lotion. And that, my friends, is all I have for you on that. If you have any tips or tricks that you would love to share with the group, I always love learning things from my patients as well as you. And I would be delighted if you would share your recommendations for dry skin, eczema, everything like that down in the comments. Also, if this was helpful and you would like to see more, make sure to subscribe. Let me know what other content you would like to see like this and check out the description box for a free handout that I give to my patients when they come in with eczema and I hand them this so that they can like remember Remember all the steps a little bit easier. You can hand it out to your patients if you have them or use it yourself, go for it. I also have a video all about diaper rash that dives more into just the diaper rash part. So you can check that out. I'll leave that linked as well. Thank you so much for sharing your day with me. I hope your skin armor stays very strong this winter and beyond, and I will see you next time. Bye.